Welcome to Potential Energy Diagrams. We've talked about the changes in energy that accompany a reaction, or the heat of reaction, delta H. In this lesson, we're going to take what we've learned about collision theory and apply it towards what we know about changes in energy during a reaction and how to represent those with something called a potential energy diagram. So let's start by recapping endothermic and exothermic changes. We know that in endothermic processes, energy is absorbed which means it's a gain in energy as we go from reactants to products. And lastly, we know that for endothermic processes, the delta H is positive. For exothermic processes, we know that energy is released, which means that the products are lower in energy than the reactants. And we also know that the delta H for exothermic reactions is negative. Now we can show the delta H, we can show the heat of reaction for endothermic and exothermic processes using what's called a potential energy diagram. So we're going to start by using a very basic version. So in the first one over here on the left, we're going to show an endothermic change. So we have potential energy on the y-axis, and the reaction coordinate, which is just the direction the reaction goes in, is on the x-axis. We can see that the reactants start off at some certain amount of energy. Now sometimes these diagrams can have numbers on the axis, but I've left them off here because we're just going to treat it very generally. So the reactants have some amount of potential energy. We know that because energy is absorbed, the products have to have more energy. So they might be up here, say. Let's say the products are up here. The distance on this diagram between the products and reactants is equal to the delta H. So we can see that the delta H is positive on this diagram because the energy is basically going up. If we now look at the exothermic diagram, we know that the products are going to be lower in energy than the reactants because that energy was released. So if the reactants start up here at some certain amount of energy, the products are going to be lower, let's say down here. And again, the difference between the reactants and products on this diagram is going to be equal to the delta H. And the delta H is negative because we can clearly see the energy went down. Now the real question is, how do we get from the energy of the reactants to the energy of the products? We know it isn't just an instantaneous shift because we saw a transition state when we talked about collision theory. So that's the next question we're going to ask. How do we get from reactants to products? And as you can see, we're using an exothermic example, and there are essentially three possibilities we have. In the first scenario, we have some amount of energy for the reactants, and we can see that energy going down, 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 dipping actually lower, and then coming back up to the energy of the products. In the second scenario, there's a steady decrease in energy from the reactants to the products. And in the third scenario, we see the energy go up first, and then it drops down to the energy level of the products, the final energy of the products. Before I say which one of these cases it is, and before we analyze each case, try to take a guess as to which you think the correct pathway is for the energy. Okay. Hopefully you have a selection in mind, but we're going to go through now and explore each one of these options. So scenario one, the energy went down first and came back up. Well, going down makes sense because it's exothermic and there has to be a release of energy, but it doesn't really make sense that there'd be a gain in energy right here. Like halfway through the reaction, suddenly there's an input of energy. It doesn't make sense. So we're going to not consider this one. Now let's look at the second one. A steady gradual change in energy Maybe, that could be the case. It does make sense, the energy needs to go somewhere, so we'll put a question mark on that one for now. And let's look at the last one. In this third scenario, the energy goes up first, and then settles back down to where the products are. So overall, there was a release of energy, because even though we gained a little bit, there was energy released. Now, do we know anything that could explain this sudden peak in energy? And the answer is that yes, we do. In collision theory, we talked about the formation of the activated complex, which was a very high energy state, a transition state, between the reactants and the products. And that right there, that peak, is the activated complex. So this second scenario was actually incorrect as well. And this third scenario is what we actually see occur as the energy changes. And this is the basic shape that we see for all potential energy diagrams. So let's look at this in more detail and see if we can label some important parts. First of all, we know that the activated complex is right here at the top, at the peak of this curve. So immediately, this curve shows three quantities that are of interest to us. From this point to the bottom, 
shows the total energy of the reactants. From this point to the bottom shows the total energy of the products. And from this highest point, the activated complex to the bottom shows the total energy of the activated complex. So this graph shows us the energy of the activated complex, the reactants, and the products. But there are two more quantities that are shown on this that are even more important. For the first one, I'm going to use a dotted line to extend the lines of the reactants and the products. So here's the reactants extended, and here's the products extended. The distance between these two extended lines is essentially the difference in energy between the reactants and the products. That is our delta H, our heat of reaction. So we can see that delta H, the change in enthalpy, is one of the quantities shown on this diagram. The second important quantity is the energy change from the start, so that's the reactants, this is where the energy starts, to the very top, which is the activated complex. So this amount of energy that needs to be added to the reaction from the reactants to reach the height of the activated complex, that we talked about in collision theory as the minimum energy needed for the collision to take place. And we called that the activation energy, E sub A. And the activation energy, which is the initial energy needed to start the reaction, is always going to be from the start of the potential energy diagram to the highest point. And these are the five important quantities that we can see on a potential energy diagram. The heat of reaction, the activation energy, the energy of the activated complex, the energy of the reactants, and the energy of the products. That wraps up our lesson on potential energy diagrams. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.